on a mission to be champs since they let me free. Prepare for combat, my adversaries crumble. Fake shit, I got a reputation for damage. Busters get ready to rumble. They lock me in a cell, have me trapped in a living hell. Though not guilty, I'm still in jail. Brother, I serve my time like a soldier. Maintain composure. My shadow box in the fight to the death. Busting boulders, every boxer with a bag. That's right, y'all. Not even a hurricane can stop me and JP. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Cheap Seats Boxer Show. Yes, that's right. That's two in one day, and that's how we do it. Me and JP, unfortunately, because of Hurricane Harvey, are not going to be able to get together again for another week. I think it's like almost a month now. Uh, but we will be back next week for Superfly. Um, before we get to anything, of course, we know... The uh, you guys have all seen it on the news. The the Hurricane Harvey hit hit us and hit us hard. Me and JP we came out unscathed. Uh, water got close, but never got into the house. We live in a w- suburb of West Houston. A lot of us in this city were o- were okay, but there were still quite a few even in the suburbs like this that took in water. Uh, the bayous overflowed, and a lot of people lost a lot of things. Uh, then you go into Houston, South Houston, uh, most people lost everything. So our thoughts and our prayers are with them. Um, it's a it's a crazy thing, people. Uh, if you can understand anywhere you've been, if you get three, four, five inches of rain in one night. That's a that's a shitload, and I think it was Sunday night. I think we got maybe it was even Saturday night. We got um, I think in 24 hours we got 19 inches of rain here, and we weren't even the hardest hit. There were there were other areas that was in 24 inches. Uh, I think total we had 40. Six forty-seven, and in the highest places, it was fifty-one point eight eight inches, almost fifty-two inches of rain in a few days period. Um, that's more than most places in the United States get in an entire year, and we got it in about a three-day period. Uh, but you know what? We couldn't even be stopped by Hurricane Harvey. So let's go like this: is the Hurricane Harvey after party? Um, first things first. Now that we're getting into the show, follows on Twitter. At Cheap Seats Box, iTunes, rate, review. Help us out, people. Look, man, we're going through a hurricane. We came through on the other side, and here we are giving the shows. That's how, that's how dedicated we are, people. So if you could take the time out, rate and review on iTunes. We will shout you out next week. You will be the next unofficial sponsor. The one that a uh, show that everybody will be listening to uh, in Superfly. And the week after, you can do get a, a separate account, and it'll do it for Canelo and Triple G. So, welcome to all the listeners, all the platforms, and you know, I can hear kids screaming in the background, everybody's having fun, the sun is out now, um, and the Zoom listener, I didn't get to the Zoom listener, uh, email show, box, boxing at uh, gmail.com, questions, comments, anything like that, anything like that, we would truly appreciate it, um, alright, did you guys have fun? I can finally talk about it by name, it's over, Mayweather versus McGregor, did you get your $100 worth? Did you? Did you? I can still say I haven't seen it. I've heard a lot of people talk about it. And from what people are saying, they got exactly what they thought they were going to get, yet somehow, yet disappointed, yet somehow satisfied at the same time. Why is that? Because it was a wrestling match. It was WWE, baby. That's how this whole thing rolled. Uh, what they say? I, I, now this, look, like I said, I haven't seen. I saw the last. What I see on Twitter, uh, there was that one jab that Connor threw that touched Mayweather's nose and he laughed at him that, that he didn't even duck why I mean, he didn't even think about ducking that punch it's just funny um 
And then I saw the last 10 seconds where it was stopped. Uh, no knockdown. Kind of shocking. Um, the fact that people said it was close in the beginning. Not shocking. Have you guys ever watched a wrestling match? Have you ever watched a wrestling match? Let's remember, this is a boxing match, right? So even though people dislike Mayweather, this was a boxing match. And boxing fans were rooting for Floyd for the most part. Because you can't let the MMA guy come in and make boxing look bad. So in a wrestling match, so that makes, oh, sorry. So that makes Mayweather the face. Which he's not usually the face. He's usually the heel. Because it's a boxing match. The heel in this case was Conor McGregor. Oh, he was the face to the MMA guys, but trust me, they were on the home turf. They, they were... <sighs> Can I take this back to wrestling days? Steve Austin used to be one of the greatest faces, yet heel faces of all time, right? The anti-hero face. The hero. Everybody loved him. Yet, when he went to the home of all the heart found, all the heart members, Bret Hart and Owen Hart and all these guys in Calgary... They were all heels, but they were in Calgary, so they were the face. They were getting cheered like crazy, and Austin, the face, was getting booed. This is the same idea. This was the boxing match. This was his home. He was the face. McGregor was the heel. And if you've ever seen a wrestling match, the heel always is winning in the beginning. That's what it is. And then the, the face, the baby face, makes a comeback and wins the match. That's how you send people home happy. So I hope you guys got your money's worth. It was what it was. A wrestling match. I will say this. I still never watched it. I never talked about it. Leading up to it. Except that people were dumb if they thought this was real. You got what you deserved. If you bought it. You got what you deserved. Vince. You know I'm talking about you. You kind of deserved it too by. Fucking up your night for your boys. But you know. It is what it is. All right, but I did watch on replay the undercard, two under, the undercard fights. We'll start. You know, let's start. Let's start at the at the, at the first one I watched. Badu Jack, Nathan Cleverly. JP hit on this. Badu Jack. People can say, "Oh, everybody hates on Floyd and everything Floyd, everything TMT." Jack is the exact opposite of that. He is a TMT fighter that people didn't like, and people were like, "Look, he was a joke. He got knocked out in one." Um, Oh man, I had the name <laughs> uh, of the guy he got he, that knocked him out. Uh, I oh my god. Anyway, if I'm not mistaken, I think um, at some point Gilberto Ramirez be that same guy. Um, but anyway, he comes back from the first round loss, right? People are like, see, we told you he was a joke, so he he was overrated. And instead, what he does is he dusts himself off. He comes back. He he works his ass off. He's not the most... Um, flashy, technically flashy type guys. But he's just a solid, straightforward, no frills kind of boxer. A lot of one-twos. A lot of, of, of what people would call basics. But is, is more of a lunch pail guy. He's going to bring his fucking lunch. And you better bring yours too. Because if not, he's, gonna, he's probably going to wear you down. And that's what he did to Nathan Cleverly. And we know Cleverly, he may have the WBA regular title, which is a real title. But Cleverly really stood no chance. He was a fading guy. But for Jack, it was a great introduction into the into the uh, light heavyweight division. Um, and he just slowly, I think the fight early, it was, it was a good first round. Um, Cleverly caught. Jack with some shots, and they Jack caught him with shots. But it was early evident that that it was evident early that uh, Badu Jack was going to be way too much, and then he ends up stopping him in the fifth round. I know he called out Stevenson. I didn't see that part. JP said that I listened to. The, I already listened to it. I just listened, it just barely came out. I just listened to it. But uh, and, and and JP said I don't think Adonis Stevenson can hide from him because the uh, thing. Let me tell you something. We know about Adonis Stevenson's past. We know about the. The, we know about the prostitutes and the illegal fighting and the muscle and the beating of the women and the imprisoning of the women and all, all that shit. What you don't know is, as a youth, Donna Stevenson was a world-class hide-and-seek player. Oh, he'd be hiding for hours and nobody could find him. So trust me, he will find a way to hide from any credible opponent. That's what Donna Stevenson does. 
He has mastered it. He is he has gotten paid well by hiding. So I don't see any reason why he would change that. Um, but hats off. People actually just I like JP was saying. We were talking about this yesterday. We saw each other for a few minutes, and nobody really bad mouths Jack. The fact that he's a TMT fighter and a lot of people do hate on TMT fighters because they hate Floyd. It's justifiable. If you don't like him, you don't like him. That's just part of it. Um, but nobody can, nobody, I don't hear anybody bad mouth Badu Jack. They have nothing but respect for him because he is, if, let's put it this, if you hate on Badu Jack and you don't like Badu Jack, then you really don't like boxing because this is what boxing is all about. A guy who can get knocked out, think that He's been exposed and he's not that good. And to dust himself off, to, to have that comeback, and to beat guys, which he really did, James DeGale, um, one of the, which is Anthony Peterson, uh, not Peter, oh God, Anthony Durrell, um, and now a guy like Cleverly, he's earned his stripes. He's earned his respect. He says, I don't just need it because, oh, this is who I, you know, like a, like one of his stable mates, Javante Davis, oh, I just, you should just give it to me. No, he's taken it and earned it. And uh, got nothing but respect for Jack. Um, I hope he does get Stevenson. I mean, I don't know if he can beat Stevenson because, let's be honest, they're both susceptible to punches. They've both been knocked out in one. Uh, but Stevenson does have the bigger, the bigger right, uh, the bigger power punch on the right hand, but left hand. But he's got the bigger punch than Badu Jack. And I think ba- if it goes twelve, Badu Jack could beat him. If there's a knockout, I think Adon Stevenson will find a way to land that left and probably stop Jack. But don't think I won't be rooting for him. Uh, Javante Davis, how about that guy? How about not making weight? How about not only not making weight, but then saying, fuck it, I ain't trying. It don't mean I'll get another title. That's the attitude I like to see. Yeah, that, that that's a winning attitude. That's an attitude that's going to get you real far in the sport. Um, he didn't make weight in his last fight. It took him three, three times to finally do it. And then when people question, hey, have you heard anything? He was an asshole about it. Hey, fuck you, that's rumors. Go, you know. It's like, man, stop. It, it, it's justifiable that people question, you know, you making weight. I mean, wh- wh- why can't people question you? Why are you so above reproach like that? Um, in the ring, you love a guy like Davis. Outside the ring, not so much. The problem is, is he is, not, he is bringing that shitty attitude into the ring now that's crossing over into his training and into the ring and this fight just showed that he needs to have all the advantages right now because he's falling into that broner type thing has he gotten there yet of course not he's still young he can still learn but there's a pattern going here there's a pattern going there it's the same thing we saw a little bit with with broner same thing we saw with chavez jr i love those two those two are joined at the hip as far as i'm concerned um but he's so underperformed against uh, Francisco Fonseca. Fonseca is not a good fighter. And yet, was he winning? Yes. Was it competitive? Hell yeah, it was competitive. And, you know, then he hits him with the with the behind-the-head rabbit punch. And, look, th- there was a couple of things. Could that punch with, you know, Polly? I heard Polly. Uh, I you know, fuck you, Polly. Anything that you say anymore, I don't even listen to you. But I don't take it very serious either. Um, but I will say this. In the ninth, I think it was the ninth round that got stopped. Fonseca was having success, and I think it really you you saw Javante Davis keep on looking to the referee to help him out. He was doing a lot of complaining, a lot of showboating in, in a in a time that he shouldn't showboat. Kind of to a lesser degree, kind of looked like the Prince against uh, Barrera, even though Barrera was winning and Fonseca wasn't. Uh, he was way underperforming and still showboating. It just it looks pathetic. It's like what the fuck are you showboating about? First of all, you're fighting a a nobody, a bum. And then you're fucking showboating as you're as you're not even fighting well. It's not a good look, man. Um, but Fonseca's having some some success. He's getting a little. Finally, it looks like in the beginning of the ninth round, Tank has had enough and he's pissed. And he kept, let's give him credit. He caught Fonseca with some big shots, and he definitely did hurt him. So when he finally caught him behind the head, who knows? The problem was if people say. He, and most people just said this that you can't even say he was looking for a way out because he was so competitive in the fight why would he be looking for a way out could he have been sure could it also have been hey we need to get this uh 
since everything else was scripted that night in the main event, hey, we need to get this main event started on time. So uh, can we go ahead and go take that fall after you get hit? Okay, thank you. Um, maybe that was it. I don't know. But all in all, it's a bad look. Javante Davis looked like shit. Can he come back? Of course. Will he? Time will tell. The weight thing is now an issue because it's two fights in a row. Like I said, the first, like the last fight when he missed the first two times and made it the third time. You need to stick at 130 right now because you can stay away from Lomachenko. But 135, there's some tough motherfuckers in there. And you know, say the Broner, Mayweather beef is fake, not fake. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Maybe they're, sometimes they're stupid, maybe sometimes they're not. But if you go up to 135 and that beef can carry on, Broner's got a fighter in Robert Easter who, the way you look last time, if you had to go up to 135, will probably whip your ass tank. So let's not go there. Let's go ahead and just... Um, Make weight the next time? Yes, it will look bad. It'll look very Canelo-ish. I can't make 154 anymore. Oh, I made 154 for my my title fight against Liam Smith. Like That that looks like shit. So it's going to look bad, but if you don't miss weight after this, then after two or three fights of making 130 again, people will be like, okay, I get it, you know. Chalk it up to youth. But you better come correct next time because, honestly, this was your chance to be on, on a stage where – where people would see you and be like, I want to see that guy again. You were very anti-Terrence Crawford. Speaking of which, Terrence Crawford stripped of the IBF belt. That was an amazing 11-day run. I was corrected on Twitter. I said two-week run. An 11-day run of the undisputed champion at 140 pounds. Thanks for the memories, Terrence Crawford. It was what it was. It was great. It was a great moment to see the unification. We knew it wouldn't last long, but I'm sure we thought it would last more than 11 days, right? <laughs> Um, how about Miguel Cotto, Yoshihiro Kamagai? Um, this fight was what I thought it was going to be. That's why I didn't justify talking about this. I, I said Cotto at this point, coming off a two-year almost layoff after a loss, should not be fighting for a title. And Kamagai should never be fighting for a title because he's not that type of fighter. This fight proved it. He stood no chance in this fight. He never did he even get close to winning a round. Maybe won. This fight was not competitive, was never going to be competitive. Kamagai is another guy. People love him because he can take a good ass whipping. Oh, he can take an ass whipping like nobody's business. But he's also a guy who has lost to a faded Robert Guerrero. Lost to. And, uh, <laughs> is this a. <laughs> I, don't even know if this, I don't even know if he had a prime. I guess he did. But an, a little bit over the hill, Alfonso Gomez. So. Yeah, he had two awards with Soto Cross. Soto Cross was faded as shit too. He got a draw and a and a win. Doesn't say much. So Soto Cross is done. He's done, son. Um, look, this just goes with Cotto's career. He's going to end it how he, how he started. It. He was a very good fighter. He's not one of the greats. I'm sorry, I've never been a fan of his. And he's had some he's had some good defenses. But winning the titles, you know, people give Broner a lot of shit for how and against who he won his titles off of. You got to be the same with Miguel Cotto. It's it's more of the who's that of him winning his titles. All right, let's just call it like it is. His one name, his shining mm-hmm. moment, is beating a broke down, no legged Sergio Martinez. The name's good, but. Let's be honest, ever since the, the Chavez fight, he was done. He, he, Daniel Gill beat him the fight before that, basically. Um, look, at, here, here's Cotto's title wins. Kelson Pinto, Michael Jennings, Yuri Foreman, like I said, the broke-down Sergio Martinez, and now Yoshihiro Kamagai. It's not that impressive, people. There's one name on there that you're going to remember. Maybe two, because Kama guy, he's a um, like a cult icon, like a cult hero, you know, like a like a movie that's so shitty that it becomes a, a like a cult classic because it's so bad. 
you know who Kama Guy is? Kama Guy is the showgirls of boxing. It wasn't any good, but it wasn't awful. And you got to see some titties, so hey, it was good. So we got, like, in in boxing, taking an ass whipping is almost like showing titties. You know, it's like you can sell some titties, you're happy. Hey, the movie sucked, but hey, I got to see some titties, so we're good. Hey, this fight sucked, but you know what? Guy took an ass whipping and he kept on coming, so it was good. That's pretty much what it is. But Kama Guy is just, he, he's just a dude. He's nothing special. Um, the fight of the week, for me, was Sergey De- uh, Derevinchenko against Toriano Johnson on FS1 on Friday. That was the fight. I think IBF eliminator for the middleweight title. Toriano Johnson, a guy that people want to see Triple G fight. No, Nobody who really knows boxing thought Toriano Johnson was a threat to Triple G. They think to- they thought Derevinchenko would be a fun fight, but not so much. But now we saw how easily... Derevinchenko beat Toriano Johnson. He kind of he hit him at will, and Toriano Johnson was the common guy of this fight. He took an ass whipping like nobody's business. Honestly, I think the fight went two or three rounds longer than it had to. Uh, it looked like Derevinchenko was getting tired at points, but never at any point you hear the, another helicopter is. They're still doing water rescues out here, people. Still doing a lot of water rescues, but. Um, Let's let we're we gonna let this thing go by. Let's let this thing go by. Uh, but but never there was this fight was never in doubt. Johnson was getting hit with anything and everything. Derry Vinchenko was throwing at him, and his face, uh, J- Toriano Johnson's face was falling up bad. It was a fun fight, but never I didn't think somewhat competitive, but not very close. Um. So Derevinchenko puts himself at the top of the list for an IBF title shot after this Triple G Canelo fight. Will he get a shot? Hmm. Honestly, at this point, it's probably more likely he's going to get a shot at um, a vacant title. But we we shall see because give Triple G credit. He likes the belts. Uh, He may fight that fight. If he knows that after that is a shot to unify it, if and when he beats uh, Canelo Alvarez, uh, to me that was the, that that was the best fight. Uh, uh, it was a fun fight. Uh, you knew it going into it. It's probably the best, definitely the best uh, matchup, most competitive matchup on paper, and it and it panned out to be to be so. Um, one last thing: Wilder versus Ortiz. A lot of rumors. Will it happen? Won't it happen? Now supposedly. Uh, Stavern is going to step aside for this fight. Never trust Don King. You never know. You never know what's going to happen. But if it happens, I'll give Wilder credit because it's a fight he doesn't have to take, that he will take. But how much credit will I give him? Minimal. Mm, he's been champion almost three years. Mm, you still haven't made it mandatory. Yeah, you tried once. But one mandatory in three years, that's one one attempt more than a Donna Stevenson, it's not really that much to brag about. I mean, you look like a guy like Julius and Dongo. Title, unify, going for a total unification, undisputed championship. That's what he did on his when he got his titles. So I can't really give too much credit if this is the first time in three years you're going to fight a really worthy, credible opponent. Will it be good? Yes, because if... if Wilder could get past a guy like Ortiz, it tells you that he's growing, he's learning, and he's actually, when need be, is better than what he looks like a lot of times with lesser opponents. But a lot of times when you start fighting those lesser opponents, your level goes down a bit. If you're not, like like we always say, iron shopping, iron sharpens iron, iron, god damn, okay, this is a tongue twister for me. Uh, so he's really a dull blade at this point. But he's got a sharp tip. I got that that right hand is motherfucker, ain't it? It can still it still penetrate you. That's for sure. Um, and the winner to fight, Anthony Joshua. We can only hope. Sounds good to me. I'll take it. It'll be sometime next year, but I'll take it. Let's just hope that that gets made through. You know, goes through, gets made. 
you know, there's a reason that he signed with Al Heyman, right? Ortiz. We'll see. It's easy to make if they want to make it. So if they don't make it, it kind of tells you most likely that Wilder didn't want to make it. Or, of course, Don King steps in and does Don King. Um, that's about it, everybody. I had to do it quick. I got to get in and out. Me and JP, finally, after a month, we'll finally get back together next week. As long as there's no other hurricanes coming. I don't think there is. Um, you can follow the show on Twitter, at Cheap Seats Box. iTunes, rate, review. You will be the next unofficial sponsor. Give us a Hurricane Harvey. Just eat a donation of, of a rate and review. But if you could, go out there and donate to one of those uh, foundations. Like JP was saying, uh, a lot of things needed out here, people. We got bags of clothes we're donating, just bags and bags of it, just trying to help in any way possible. Um, a lot of people, all the high schools around here, my son's high school or his, his former high school, uh, was a shelter. A lot of shelters just down the street from us. It, it's as bad as it looked. Today you wouldn't be able to tell it because the streets are completely dry on our side of town, yet on the other side of town, still underwater. Um, so keep them in their prayer, keep them in your prayers. Um, do what you can, you know, any, any little bit helps. Um, we thank you guys. Oh, uh, see, oh, you know what? Do me a favor. If you guys follow the show on Twitter, I've said this before, retweet the show. Keep on retweeting the show. Get it out there. Get this out there. Uh, maybe I'll hashtag the second one with uh, Donate Houston or Houston Strong. Whatever one of, them, one of those hashtags are for, for the donations, I'm going to put that on there, I think. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, so please retweet it. Get it out there. Uh, get the fight fans, get the listeners of the show, hopefully, to, uh, to you know, 5, 10, 20, whatever you guys want to get. Just try to help out in any way you can. A lot of people need it. Millions and millions of people out here are going to be in need of, you know, there's, what, 6 million people in this metro area, and there's going to be... There's going to be a couple million of them in need of some help in, in some shape or form. And at least a couple hundred thousand is in dire needs of stuff who have pretty much lost everything. Um, I think that's about it, guys. I don't know how to end the show other than thank you guys for listening. And, uh, you know, this is where the fighters fight and the fans commentate. And we do it just like you from the cheap seats because we ain't buying no tickets, God damn it. Peace. Again, I'll be the next heavyweight champion Call me crazy, but no one can fake